Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of our Flinch Squad Circuit. We are in week 5 today's episode. We'll be covering all games from week 5 and looking at how things are shaping up going into this circuit. We've covered 4 of the weeks so far. If you've missed any of those, go back up here. I'll link a card for you lovely people. And you can go and check out the matches that we've had so far. We've had some incredible games. And just being able to showcase these players has just been amazing and just a pleasure of mine. So I really hope you guys at home are enjoying it. And I'm sure the players are having a blast. So it's going to be great looking over who we're going to be featuring in this episode. So quickly just to cover the matchups this week. We can hop in and see that we've got Johnny versus Nigel. Amaji versus Krim. We've got Will versus Luigi. Alex versus Pinko. Yorine versus Bebum, Stu versus Pokemoni, Purple versus Shade, and Hectic versus Xenophist. So, some really great matches for us to go into this week's episode. I hope you enjoy the matches. We're going to kick off with them very soon. But before I do, I will just remind you, I'm going to start putting out information about the Ultra Circuit Series, which will be starting very soon. So if you'd like to play in this circuit, join the Patreon and sign up and play in the tournament for some absolutely amazing prizes, some trophies, some points as well towards the invitation, which will be a live streamed event at the end of the season, which we're going to have guest commentators on. It's going to be a one day event. It's going to be very exciting and even bigger prizes at the end of that tournament so to take the crown obviously for the flinch squad circuit champion of 2019 so it's going to be very exciting so just keep an eye out for those if you're interested you've got any questions about the circuit or anything leave them in the comment section below and also leave your comments about the players that you're rooting for in this circuit and any comments just about the games that we have i'm sure you're going to enjoy the episode if you do remember to drop a like on the video remember to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all of the circuit action as well as our vgc daily content that we have every day our battle series guides and all sorts of other things that we have on the channel thanks for tuning in guys let's get into this first match today so clicking over we are going to kick off with Wimzai versus Johnny so here we go getting into this first match today we're going to see Wimzai challenging Johnny John Wimzai going to lead off with the Ludicolo Kyoga and Johnny leading off with that Persian Rayquaza so Rain some to the field but with that airlock ability on the Rayquaza nullifying that taking away the swift swim from that Ludicolo we're going to see the Rayquaza switch straight out and bring Amoongus in there's a fake out from the Persian into the Kyoga stopping that this turn with a fake out from the Ludicolo into the Persian Ice Beam now coming out into that Amoongus from Ludicolo as a water spout from the Kyoga going to reveal that it is scarfed and pick up the knocker on that Persian quite easy do some nice damage to that Amoongus but a berry proccing there, the wiki berry, and Amoongus able to put that Kyogre to sleep, going to La La Land. So Rayquaza now going to come back onto the field for Johnny, summoning that airlock ability with it, threatening that Ludicolo and the Ludi switching out accordingly, with Dustman and Crossman now hitting the field for Nigel. We are going to see a Z-move though, it is going to be that supersonic sky strike from the Rayquaza, which slot is it going to be into? You've got to imagine it might be into that Kyogre just to get some damage onto it, but it is into what was the Ludi, into that Dustman and Crossman, going to take that really nicely with a Grass Knot coming into that Kyogre, taking it down to about 50% health, so the Kyogre now threatened and asleep, going to switch out, the Tabulele going to come to the field bring that psychic terrain with it as the Amoongus which is out for Johnny and Incineroar now hitting the field getting that all important intimidate onto that Duskman Necrozma protecting Johnny's side of the field and extreme speed coming out but blocked by that psychic terrain and a photon geyser into the Incineroar bit of a dead turn there Tapu Lele coming out going to be able to pick up the big knockout onto that Rayquaza with a Moonblast and a Flare Blitz from Johnny's Incineroar into that Duskman Necrozma going to take it down to about 50% and proc that Citrus Berry with another photon geyser into that slot maybe predicting a switch in Moongus now coming back onto the field but not going to be able uh, to take this side shock boosted from the cycle train from this tapulele knockoff now coming out revealing the focus sash on the tapulele and another photon geyser from the dustman and the Crossman. not diverting away from that move throughout the whole game but Nigel picking up the first game there so very good game for him and uh, we'll see if Johnny can adjust going into this next game we are going to see the same leads from both players here with that Ludicolo, Kyogre, Persian and Rayquaza. Rayquaza switching out straight away again and the Xerneas now hitting the field for Johnny as he is trying to manoeuvre some 
of his board position to try and get the Xerneas set up, I think, going into these next few turns. But it is threatened from both of these water type attackers. Going to see an Ice Beam from the Ludicolo and a Water Spout going to be enough to take down this Persian. Now that double up into that slot and the Xerneas protecting here from all damage. Rayquaza coming back in now, going to summon that Airlock, get rid of the Rain effects as we see Ludicolo switch out because of the threat of the pressure there from that Flying type attack as a Water Spout comes in. And we do see the supersonic sky strike once again from the Rayquaza. Where is it going to be going into? Is it going to be the Kyogre this time? Got to hop it is into the Kyogre. So going to pick up a big knockout there. Big knockout as the Xerneas gets a Geomancy up now and puts itself in a really kind of threatening position. But with this Dustman across my out on the side of the field for Nigel, it just feels a little bit too much for these two Pokemon to deal with right now. Tapu Lele going to come back out into the field again now. We know it's got that Phil Crisash. It can take an attack from this Xerneas pretty easily. The extreme speed is blocked and we are going to see just a Moonblast into that Dustman Necrozma. Going to get the special attack drop as a fly comes out from Rayquaza now, revealing that it is a speed tie between these two. As we see the Dustman Necrozma now throw out a Sunseal Strike into the Xerneas, pick up the knockout there and Nigel having a very commanding position going into these last few turns. Cortana now coming out for Johnny as a Leaf Blade is onto that Tabulator, taking it down to its Sash and a Side Shock now into that Cortana. Winning the speed tie this time is a fly from that Rayquaza, enough to pick up the Tapu Lele and the Trick Room now coming out from Dustman and Necrozma. A really nice play here from Nigel, especially with that rain stopping the Ludicolo going to come back in and be under speeding that Rayquaza. It has got access to Ice Beam and it will be able to pick up a knockout. Doubling into the Cartana here, making sure that that threat is taken down before dealing with the Rayquaza as it does go for this fly. Once again, taking itself out of the field for one turn. So you see a Protect from the Dustman and Necrozma. Ice Beam, but blocking actually the fly into the Dustman Necrozma there as a Protect now coming out from this Rayquaza on Johnny's side. All feels a little bit too far for him to bring this match back now as Nigel's pretty going to be pretty comfortable closing this one up. Do see an Extreme Speed last stitch attempt to try and get some damage off as a Photon guys are coming out from the Necrozma and an Ice Beam going to be able to pick up the win there. So Johnny losing this one 0-2 and Nigel picking up the first win. So the next match we're going to cover is Luigi versus Will. We're going to see Luigi on your bottom screen, Will on your top screen. Will leading off with the Eveltal and Incineroar. Luigi leading off with the Incineroar Landorus here. So the Intimidate's coming out from both sides of the field. That Landorus first and and then both Incineroars. So our double Intimidate onto Will's side of the field to start us off in this one today. We are going to see the first turn, Landorus just protect here from any fake out board from that opposing Incineroar. As we see a foul play doubling into that slot and a U-turn coming out from Luigi into that Evelto on Will's side of the field, adjusting and bringing in the Xerneas now and setting himself up to potentially go for a J-Mancy this next turn. Landorus now switching out as we see the Incineroar come in, expecting probably a protect from the Xerneas now just to allow for that fake out support the next turn but no no protect there just a moon blast into the eveltal as a snarl comes out from will's eveltal to try and lower the special attack potential of that Xerneas for at least one turn. A U-turn coming out from the Incineroar on Will's side of the field as well. Just want to adjust his board position as the Stack Attacker making its appearance onto the field. Fake out into the Stack Attacker slot and another Moonblast into this Eveltal. It is going to be enough taking that down and Luigi taking a quick lead here in resources. So Incineroar coming back on the field for Will. Going to cycle and intimidate onto the opposing Incineroar. Very important here as the Xerneas switches out. For Tapu Finney this time coming onto the field. Going to summon that Misty Serene as we see the Incineroar now switch out for Will and the Landorus come onto the field cycling a yet another Intimidate onto the Stack Attacker and Incineroar knock off now into that Landorus slot as we see a Trick Room set up from this Stack Attacker so Stack Attacker the slowest thing on the field can start throwing out Rock Slides but these Intimidates are really nerfing its ability to do anything here as another Intimidate comes in from the Incineroar as the Landorus does just protect with the Gyro Ball coming into that Protect and Flare Blitz doubling into that slot Stack Attack are now threatened and wants to reset those Intimidates. Going to see Tapu Koko come in, reset the Misty Terrain as a Faker comes out from the Tapu Koko. A U-turn from the Incineroar onto that Landorus and now the Stack Attacker coming back onto the field for Will. As we see the Z-move now from Luigi is going to launch it from this Landorus. Which targets it going to be into? Either one, it's going to be super effective. It's going to be into that Stack Attacker slot. Really nice pick there from Luigi and a bit unfortunate for Will as he does lose one of his big 
threat for the Xerneas on Luigi's side of the field and you feel like now that Luigi can just maneuver his Xerneas onto the field and potentially get set up and take this but we are going to just see a forfeit as we go straight into game two. Can Will come back in this one and tie the set up? We are going to see Incineroar and Ivelto lead out for Will again and Luigi lead out with the Incineroar and Tapafini this time. We're going to see the Mr. Terrain hit the field and just the single Intimidus from each other the field onto the each other's side. So here we go, turn one, Incineroar switching out for Luigi, Xerneas hitting the field straight away with that Fairy Aura boost there. Oblivion Wing though coming out from the Iveltal into that type of Finny with the Nature's Madness now coming out into that slot, taking it down to 50% health and you've got to imagine now that that Iveltal's probably in range for a Moonblast. You're going to see the Iveltal switch out because of that threat. Stack Attacker come in and can take these Moonblasts a lot better than that Iveltal with the Landorus now switching out for Luigi. Just covering bases in case that Stack Attacker does hit the field as we see a Moonblast from the Xerneas into that slot doing minimal damage as a U-turn from the opposing Incineroar into this Landorus and will be bringing in the ground on making its first appearance for this match for Will. So bringing the sun with it and also putting a little bit more pressure onto that Xerneas that is switching out though. Incineroar now coming back in, cycling those Atimidates once more as we see the stack attack a switch out for Iveltal just to dodge any potential Groundium Zs or Earthquakes coming out. As we see a sword stance now from the Landorus on Luigi's side of the field becoming very threatening very quickly as a, a, a Precipice Blades from this ground on into the Incineroar, not affecting the Landorus because it is part flying type but now Will is under a lot of strain as this Landorus is plus two, uh, well plus one now as the Intimidate cycles onto it, um, it's threatening with that Z move the whole time. We're going to see Finny come back on, Rock Slide come out, it does double miss though with the Precipice Blades coming out from this Groudon again into the type of Finny, taking it down to about 50% health. We are now seeing the Z move from Luigi, which target is it into? Makes sense to go for the Incineroar, can't protect, there's no protect there, uh, but it is into the Groudon, he catches it as well, can it be enough to take it down? It is enough to pick up the ground on huge play here from Luigi picking that K up and the Nature's Madness onto the Incineroar, taking it down to 50% health, knocked off coming onto that type of Finny, knocking off that Wiki Berry, preventing any recovery here as the Avelta comes back onto the field for Will. We're gonna see the type of Finny just switch out now again. The Incineroar gonna hit the field once again. Cycle those intimidates, all important intimidates as a sucker punch now coming out into the Landorus with a rock slide, gonna hit and connect and pick up the knockout on the opposing Incineroar. And things aren't looking too great for Will now. His resources are really stretched. The stack attack are coming back onto the field, but can't really deal with this Landorus as we see a fake out into the Iveltal to pick up the knockout. We are going to see an earthquake. The Shukaberry activate there on the stack attacker. Take down the Incineroar and the Jarabal coming out. It's not going to be a trick room and enough to take down the Landorus. So stack attacker still sticking around, still making a name for itself and still going to have a little bit of a chance to take this game. But it's health so low and the Xerneas has got so much health left. You've got to think that the, the, the match is kind of over for Will and we do see the forfeit there. We do see the forfeit there. So we're going into our next match now and it's going to be Pinko VGC versus Alex. So going to be a good one today as we see Alex lead off with the Tapu Koko Groudon and Pinko lead off with that Crobat and Groudon as well. So two Groudons on the field here. We see the Electric Terrain and the Sun set up now. So going to turn one with a Taunt coming out from that Tapu Koko. Going to stop that Crobat setting up the Tailwind and a Sword Stance coming out from Alex's Groudon. Really putting on the pressure here and returned in favour from Pinko. Both Groudons setting up plus two on the field now. The Crobat and not too worried though because it is flying big has to worry about that type of cocoa here as it is hit by a thunderbolt does survive though taking this ground on down with a super fang at 50 percent health as we see a tectonic rage now fired out from alex's side of the field it's going to be into you've got to imagine pinko's ground on but it has protected going to resist this damage because of that protect and takes it down and handles it pretty nicely now. I'm gonna see the Crobat now switch back out and Vile Plume come out for Pinko. An odd pick, but a really good one. Able to absorb those electric type attacks from the opposing type of Gogo pretty nicely, but Alex is guard on winning the speed tie here against Pinko's and with that plus two, able to clean up the field. We see the Crobat and the Sogolayo now hit the field again for Pinko. He's gonna protect this Sogolayo here, try and get something set up with this Crobat, Tailwind or something, but the Capricorn Coco 
on Alex's side, just gonna deny that with a discharge. Take the crawl back down, and now the Sogale are in a terrible position against this Groudon and Tepacoco. Thunderbolt gonna come out, and a Sunsteel Strike, revealing that the Sogale is faster than that Groudon for the next game. So some good information there for Pinko, as a Fire Punch comes out from Alex to close this one up and take game one. Very well played there from Alex, and Pinko has a lot to do to come back into this one in game two. So we are gonna get straight into it here. And we'll see if there's any adjustments. We're going to see Alex lead off with that ground on Tapu Koko once again. And a little bit of an adjustment here from Pinko with the Tapu Fini and Groudon coming out. Both Groudon still appearing first. And uh, we are going to see a misty seed from the opposing Groudon on Pinko's side of the field. So boosting that special defense by one stage. Tapu Fini going to switch straight out as we see Vile Plume now come out and hit the field as a taunt comes out from the Tapu Koko into that slot. Sword Stance again from Alex's Groudon and just a precipice blades now from Pinko's Groudon. And takes down that Tapu Koko which was so pivotal in that first game. Smeagol now hitting the field for Alex to provide some fake out support and just a general support for that Groudon as we see a follow me come out from it. Redirecting all those attacks from the Vile Plume. Gonna see a, a Grass Knot doing huge damage into that and a <laughs> Life Orb activated as well, pro procking on the Vile Plume. Now taking a Fire Punch and going down as we see the Smeagol take some Moody Boost. But now Sogale are gonna hit the field as Tabu Fini out as well. So let's see what we go for. Protect here from that Sogale, another follow me from that Smeagol protecting the Groudon as an icy wind comes out from Tabu Fini and does chip the Smeagol and reduces that speed that onto the ground and by one stage we are going to now see a z move come out from alex putting on the pressure with this ground on and it's groundium z the tectonic rage you've got to think it is into the tabu fini slot is it going to be enough to take the knockout and it is more than enough to take the knockout here big big turn there for alex and taking some big strides in this game as the ground on returns to the field now for pinko and the xerneas comes onto the field for alex we're going to see it protect from the xerneas here sun seal strike into that xerneas and a precipice blades from the ground on into to the opposing Groudon. Is it enough though? It is enough. A critical hit. That's a huge turn because you would have thought otherwise you probably survived there. And then we see the forfeit from Alex. So we are taking this to a game three. Alex is going to lead off again with that Tapu Koko Groudon and we do see the Vile Plume this time come out for Pinko with that Tapu Fini. Going to override the electric terrain here and the Vile Plume with that Chlorophyll ability going to put on some huge pressure to that Groudon straight away. Especially the Sludge Bombs as well into that Tapu Koko which is a fairy type. Going to see the Groudon just protect as we see the Tapu Koko pivot out for the Smeagol for the next turn and an icy wind followed up from that Tapu Fini and just chipping away that Smeagol and potentially any focus sash that we're going to see there. Smeagol getting the evasion moody boost here, not so great for Pinko but can still play around it. Groudon feeling very pressured so we're going to switch out and Xerneas hit the field now as we see the Vile Plume just go for a protect from any potential fire punches or anything like that coming out as we see the Tapu Fini just go for another icy wind now it is going to hit into that Xerneas and all important Lower that speed stat on that Pokemon as we see an attack rise and a speed drop from the Smeagol. Here we go. See another follow me from the Smeagol here as we see a sludge bomb into that slot. It is going to be more than enough to pick up the knockout there. And we are going to see a heal pulse which is into that Vile Plume. Doesn't really need it, but all the health is just as useful as any other. We are going to see now a Geomancy from this Xerneas on Alex's side of the field get set up and become very threatening very quickly. Still got to worry about the Vile Plume, especially with the Sludge Bomb and especially with the chlorophyll ability and the sun being up but it's going to still outspeed at least have a coco here so you see the Xenius just protect this turn and we are going to see a discharge come out from the tapu coco kind of pick up a paralysis on something everything taking that quite comfortably critical hit on the vile plume but able to take that and the tapu finny is paralyzed but does and is able to get this icy wind off now into the tapu coco dropping its speed stacked by one stage moonblast now coming out into the vile plume is it enough it isn't enough it actually isn't enough and vile plume able to take down this tapu coco huge turn here and that survival is massive as another icy wind is able to come out from this tapu finny law that is Speed stat again on the Xerneas, down to neutral now from this Geomancy boost as the Groudon hits the field. As we see a Grass Knock come out from this Vile Plume into the Groudon, now outspeeding the Xerneas, picking up the knock out there. Big turn from Pinko as the Life Orb Recall takes it down. Dazzling Gleam going to be enough to take down this type of Finny, but you've got to think Pinko has the Groudon and that Sogaleo in the back, and it's going to be more than enough to deal with this Xerneas. So we're going to see a Protect from the Groudon now as we see the Moonblast into that slot and a Trick Room set up from the Sogaleo 
and sealing the deal for Pinko. So coming back into this match and really doing well to um, to steal this one today. Unfortunate to Alex, he's had such an explosive start to this game, but a few things haven't went his way. But sometimes that's how it goes. But great game to Pinko. We're going to go on to our next one, which is Hectic versus Xenophist Ace. Going to be a really good one to go into next. So we'll just kick into this momentarily. And now we see Xenophist Ace on the top of your screen leading off with the Tapulele, Sogaleo and Hectic leading off with that Groudon Venusaur. So the Groudon put a lot of pressure onto the Sogaleo very early on here, especially with that Venusaur pressuring the Tapulele with those sleeps. We're going to see a wide guard straight away from Xenophist Ace's Sogaleo as it does go for a side shock because the sleep powder does miss, taking that Venusaur down to its focus ash and Groudon going for a substitute this turn. Putting itself in a nice position going into this following one is a Ludicolo now takes place for that Sogaleo and we see the Groudon just protect this turn as the Tabulele probably wants to target that slot down as the Sleep Powder goes into that Ludicolo but Lele targeting down that Venusaur and taking it down removing that Sleep potential from his side of the field so Xerneas now taking the place for that Venusaur as we see another side shock into this Xerneas doing huge damage with a critical hit but we are going to see the Geomancy set up from the hectic side of the field he is going to get those boosts off and just are barely hanging on after that critical hit from the side shock from the Tapulele, which is really unfortunate. Now, Pestipus Blades coming out from the Groudon, going to do big damage, take down that Tapulele, very important here. As we see, it has been scarfed and do some nice damage to the Ludicolo. Grass not coming back in return, going to take and chip that substitute, removing it from the field and exposing that Groudon going into this next turn. Sogaleo going to return to the field now. Moonblast coming out from the Xerneas, going to pick up the knockout onto the Ludicolo. Pestipus Blades outspeeding the Sogaleo and taking it down easily and revealing the life orb as well on this Groudon and Hectic really coming back into this now with the Togetic coming out for Xenophist and that is going to be game one. So we'll go into game two. Xenophist is going to lead off with the Sogale and Togetic and we're going to see the Groudon Venusaur lead again for Hectic. So let's see if we can see any adaptations here as we see a protect from the Sogaleo and a sleep powder straight into that Togetic. Going to put it straight to sleep, deny any sort of speed control or support for this side of the team as the Groudon goes for a substitute and protect itself going into this next one. We're going to see Sleep Powder now. Put that Sogaleo to sleep and both Pokemon on Xenophis Ace's side out of action. As we see Stone Edge into that Togetic and take it down just below 50% health. Some nice damage there. Put it in range for probably a Sludge Bomb this next turn and we do see the forfeit. So we'll go into our next match here, which is going to be Pokemon versus Stu. So I'm going to be an exciting one for us to do. Stu's been on form up to now in this tournament, so it's going to be a big ask for Marty to have a result here, but we'll see what happens. Happens. So you see Stu lead off with the Gengar Lugia and Marty lead off with the Amoongus Xerneas. So pressure coming all around from that Lugia, which is quite interesting. You see it's not multi-skill. We're going to see a protect from this Xerneas and the taunt from the Gengar into that Amoongus here. We are going to see this Z Tailwind here from the Lugia, boosting its critical hit rate and putting the speed control on Stu's side of the field going into this next one. We see the taunt does block a spore there on the Amoongus. The Xerneas is going to switch straight out now. It doesn't want to entertain anything in front of this Gengar and Lugia as the Landorus comes in and cycles Intimidate and Eveltal now hitting the field as well for Marty going to pressure both the Gengar and the Lugia which are weak to these dark type attacks we're going to see a double up into the Landorus slot a Kriggle hit there but the Landorus actually hanging on some nice calculations on EVs there for Marty so you see the Incineroar now hit the field for Stu and uh, cycle that Intimidate as the Landorus just protects we're going to see another Aeroblast this time into the Eveltal but because of that Sol Fest, able to take that quite comfortably. We're going to see a snarl into that Lugia and do some chip damage. Lower the special attack on both that and the Incineroar now with the Faker pressure. You're going to see Marty just adapt his board position here and uh, bring in the Xerneas for that Landorus. You're going to see the Xerneas take an Aeroblast critical hit, of course, because of those boosts. As we see a knockoff from the Incineroar and another. Ooh, what are we going to see there? Knock off into the Lugia there. So Sucker Punch going for that. And the Geomancy here coming out from the Xerneas now. Going to get those boosts and try and set up to cut through Stu's side of the field. And with these boosts, if you can get through this turn, you've got to think he's probably got a good chance with this Tailwind. That is just getting set up again now from Stu just to make sure that he isn't in the worst position going into this next turn. Cinero going to U-turn out and the Kyogre now going to hit the field for Stu. You've got to imagine with Sucker Punch pressure that you don't really want to keep this Kyogre on the 
field because it can be reduced in damage, especially that water spell. We're going to see the Xenius just protect here as we see a Sucker Punch into that Kyogre. Not doing too much damage after the double Intimidate onto that slot and a water spell able to pick up the knockout there onto the Veltal. Now Moongus hitting the field for Marty, but you've got to worry about that fake out pressure. No fake out coming out as a water spell comes out on the Xenius. Actually survives getting the Moonblast in return, picking up the knockout onto the Kyogre. Big turn here as the, the um, Incineral goes for a knockoff into the Moongus. Knocking off that Aya Papa Berry as a Grass Knock comes out into that slot. Doing some minimal damage. Now Gengar going to hit the field for Stu. Things are quite close now, but it could go either way. We do see a Protect from this Gengar, and we are going to see a Dazzling Gleam just come out from the Xerneas. It's going to do some chip damage. Take this Incineroar down to low health. Proc that Berry, Mago Berry, and a Flare Blitz into the Amoongus, and it is enough to pick up the knockout here. So you've got to think now, with resources stretched on Marty's side of the field, but he does have this Landorus in reserve. Can he utilize this to take down that Gengar that is likely sashed here? So we'll see the Gengar switch out, the Lugia come back onto the field now for Stu. So we see the pressure ability activate once again. Dazzling Gleam going to be more than enough to take everything down in the field. And you got to think maybe keeping that Gengar in was the better option here to get rid of that Xerneas. And then you had the Lugia and the Incineroar to deal with that Landorus, which is on such low health. We're going to see the Gengar now protect. Can only really hit one, one of these targets on my side of the field and the, the Z move coming out from the lander is the tectonic rage and this is going to be in more than enough to pick up the knockout onto this Gengar now through the protect and uh, and it is yeah there we go and not revealing a sash there on the Gengar so maybe the reason why Stu switched it out when he didn't didn't keep it out on the field we're going to see Stu go into game two now with the Raichu and the Lugia switch things up as we see Eveltal and Amoongus come onto the field for Marty to start us out we're going to see a fake out straight away into that Eveltal and the Z Tailwind once again from the Lugia going to get the Z Tailwind boost those critical hit rates and boost the speed on everything on this side of the field but it's not it is a supersonic sky strike straight into the Amoongus not going for the Z Tailwind here just opting to remove the Amoongus a huge play for Stu and a really smart one as well because Marty probably expecting that Z Tailwind not the supersonic sky strike now Incineroar hitting the field I'm going to see a fake out into the right to prevent that from moving this turn as an earth power comes out from the Lugia into the Incineroar and a snarl come out and do nice damage to both targets on the opposite side of the field and reduce their special attack by one. Cineral now switching out for the Landorus, is going to try and cycle some more Intimidates and just keep that pivot um, Intimidate in the back as we see a Nuzzle come on to the Eveltal and get the Paralysis here with another Earth Power coming out. Snarl coming out again, does hit the Lugia, misses the Raichu, a bit unfortunate there for Marty, that chip damage is all important, but we're going to see a Volt Switch this next turn from the Raichu, going to pivot out and try and adjust his board position as the Gengar hits the field, you've got to think it's not going to enjoy a Snarl if it does come out from this Eveltal, going to see an Earthquake come out from the Landorus though, just covering switches here, as it does take the Gengar down, and if we can see a Snarl here, then it will be into a single target Lugia as the Curse body does activate as well, and, and, and Landorus is not going to be able to use that earthquake going into this next turn. Now, Kyogre going to hit the field, bring the rain with it. We know it's scoffed as well, so we're seeing the Lugia switch out. Raichu now hitting the field for Stu. Going to just try and adjust his board position, best support this Kyogre as much as possible. We do see a water spell come out from the Kyogre. He felt with that assault vest, able to take that quite nicely. Not paralyzed and able to get a snarl off, and all importantly, reduce the attack power of that Kyogre and its water spell. We're going to see Incineroar now hit the field for Marty just to keep that Landorus in the back for a little bit later as you see a fake out into the Eveltal and another water spout come out from this Kyogre and actually unfortunately able to pick up the knockout on both the Eveltal with a critical hit and that Incineroar just leaving this Landorus and it's not going to be in a position now to be able to take a Water Spout, single target in the rain from this health of the Kyogre. Kyogre not even wanting to risk that, just going to switch straight out for Lugia as we see the Raichu go for a Grass Knock, get some nice chip damage onto the Landorus and an, a Rock Slide come out. It does avoid the Lugia, which is a little bit unfortunate, but I think at this point with the Kyogre in the back, there's not a lot of coming back for Marty in this one as we see a Water Spout come out for a Stew and tie up game two. So we're going to go into a game three and this one is really heating up for us. Who is going to come out victorious here? 
Stu leading off again with that Raichu and Lugia that worked game two, and Marty leading up again with that Amoongus and Xerneas as from game one. So I'm gonna see the Amoongus switch out straight away and Incineroar hit the field now for Marty. Really nice play. He's got that fake out pressure the next turn, especially if he protects the Xerneas like he is doing this turn. So we are gonna see a Volt switch straight away from that Raichu. It is gonna be into the Incineroar. Gets a critical hit, so a little bit more damage there as we are gonna see. Maybe the Z Tailwind again from this Lugia, and here we go. Is it going to be the Z Tailwind or is it going to be the Supersonic Sky Strike? We've seen both already in this match, but it is the Z Tailwind this time that Stu is opting for, opting for that speed control as well in the side of the field. We're going to see a fake out now into that Kyogre and do some nice damage there as we see a Geomancy from the Xerneas. You've got to think though that if you're Marty you need to stall out these tailwind turns because the Kyogre is scarfed we've already seen that it is going to be outspeeding this Xerneas is still able to do a lot of damage as well as that Lugia especially with the tailwind up now we see the Incinera switch out Xerneas protecting here as Amoongus hits the field we're going to see a water spout from that Kyogre do nice damage to the Amoongus as an Aerobast follows up and it is going to actually knock it out now this might be a blessing in disguise because Marty able now to get this Incineroar in and have another shot at this fake out and get some damage off with Xerneas in the process and stall these trick tailwind turns out perfectly Raichu now going to hit the field as we do see a fake out into the Lugia he's guessed right and the Moonblast into the Raichu removing that option of fake out going into this next turn as Lugia just flinch and now we've got the, the Ludicolo coming onto the field going to get this fake out into the Xerneas here we're going to see it flinch the tailwind now set up from Stu side of the field as a U-turn comes out into this Ludicolo doing some nice damage and this will pave the way for Eveltal to hit the field now and Eveltal unlike game 2 it is on the field now the Raichu's gone and it's at full health in a really prime position to help support this Xerneas. You're going to see an Aeroblast into the Xerneas, a Scald into that Eveltal from the Ludicolo. Just pick up the burn Chip damage as well from that life orb as a knockoff comes off into that Lugia doing really nice damage there. Gonna see a sucker punch, but no sucker punch there. Denied as we see a dazzling gleam just clean up the Lugia and this Ludicolo from Stu said the field and he's left with this lolly Kyogre and it seems in the worst position now as Marty has just dominated this game three and put himself in a really nice place to clean up as we see the water spout come out from this Kyogre. Marty not wanting to risk any sort of damage here as we see a snarl come out just to reduce the damage on this Kyogre and you've got to think with the sucker punch even though burn next turn might be a nice way to do it but not needing it just going for that moon blast and able to clean this one up and what a big win here for Marty taking this game and getting some points on the board going into the rest of the week so we're going to end up now with the last game that we're going to feature in this episode and it's going to be between Imagi and Krim this was played on Shodan so who we can go and see Imagi lead off with the type of Cobra Groudon Krim lead off with that infamous Crobat and Sogaleo that he's been piloting Sogaleo just going to protect as the Crobat sets up a Tailwind here Volt Switch into that protect as Groudon sets up a Sword Stance become very threatening very quickly we're going to see a Super Fang and the double up into that slot and it's actually enough to take down the Groudon big play here from Krim as we see a Volt Switch out from the type of Cobra into the Crobat taking it down a Focus Sash and we see Imagi get back the Tapu Koko and the Serena now onto the field. Another Sun Steel Strike from this Sogaleo doing some big damage to that Tapu Koko as it returns with a Volt Switch. Doing some nice respectable damage back in return there and putting down about 50% health as we see a Protect from this Xerneas. Just trying to stall these Tailwind turns out now as we see a U-turn from the Serena. Pick up the knockout there onto the Crawback. Going to deny any further Tailwinds from Crim side of the field now as we've got the Tapu Koko coming back out being a very good useful Pokemon for Imagine in this match able to take down that Sogaleo and remove it from the field giving Xerneas a lot more support here as we do see a water spout come out from this Kyogre is going to take Serena down to about half health but the power web coming back in return for Imagine taking that down and that is going to be good game here as we see a Geomancy set up and just this Serena left for Magi to deal with on Crim side of the field. We do see a power whip, a last ditch attempt to try and remove the Xerneas, but not quite enough as another Moonblast is going to come, and it kind of indicates that that is an Assault Fist. We go into game two. Magi going to lead off with the Groudon Volcarona here, as we see the Crobat and Sogaleo once again lead out 
for Prim. So we're going to see that Sugale switch straight out for the Kyogre here. We're going to see a Z move come out. It is going to be Inferno Overdrive from the Volcarona into the Kyogre, able to take that pretty nicely. As we see now, the Kyogre going for the Z move back into that Groudon slot as it switches in with a combination of the Super Fang able to take that down. We are going to see another Super Fang into the Serena now from the Crobat. We do see an overheat from the Volcarona. It is going to be able to take it down to a Sash and then the U turn able to pick up the knockout there as Kyogre is on the field now with the Sogaleo as we see a Geomancy and a Rage Powder come out from this Volcarona Water Spout coming out from the Kyogre going to be enough to take down that Volcarona and now the Sunsteel Strike able to pick up the knockout onto the Xerneas and Krim looking like he's coming back into this one and we can go into game three all tied up who's going to come out victorious we're going to see Magi lead off with the Tapu Koko Serena and Krim lead off with that Sogaleo Crobat once again we're going to see the, the Sogaleo switch out for the Ludicolo straight away come in and um, keep that for later on as a tailwind set up by this Crobat. So we're going to come straight back out though for the Ludicolo. Going to avert any sort of fake out pressure as we see a U-turn from the Serena into that type of Coco. And the Groudon now hit the field for that Xerneas that is feeling so threatened from this Sogale. We're going to see the Sunseal Strike into that slot and the Super Fang into the type of Coco slot. And now Discharge being revealed on the type of Coco. Going to pick up the Paralysis on the Sogale. That's huge now for Magi as we see another Super Fang into that type of Coco. Able to take down both targets here but does pave the way for the Kyogre to come back in with that Ludicolo it's best made so going to be able to do anything but the Groudon switching out going to keep that to try and get the Sun back up later on as the Skull comes into that type of Coco enough to take it down Groudon going to hit the field now and does protect this turn as the Waterium Z is into that slot it's not it's into the Serena trying to take it down and the knockoff coming out but no not quite enough as the Serena able to pick up the knockout on the Kyogre and you've got to think that this is going to be too much for Krim to come back from. What a great set and a great way for us to end the episode here. So, able to pick that one up and uh, very exciting. So, now we can just go into having a quick look at the results from this week and as you can see on your screen, we've got a couple of games that still are outstanding to play, but they will be caught up and we'll feature them in the coming weeks. So, kicked off this week, we've got Will. He did lose to Luigi, but a big win there for Luigi and having a great run so far. So, he's keeping up with that and keeping the pressure on the pack, I would say. Hey, Hectic pulling back a win against Xenophist is 2-0 there. Worms I would kicked off with today against Johnny having a great win there. 2-0 beating that Rayquaza. Alex 1, Pinko 2. Pinko keeping this run going. It's unbelievable. He's having a great run at the moment. And uh, can anyone in this circuit stop him? That is the big question. We've got Krim. We've just seen there we ended up with 1 and then Imagi just scraping the win out and just man managing the ground on the type of call call really well in those matches to get a 2-1 victory there. Stu, surprisingly, who has had an incredible start to this format, having a little bit of a blip this week, but Marty, all credit to him, pulling out a 2-1 win there, which was just incredible to see. So, some big wins there, and uh, they are the results that we've got so far this week. So, if we go hop over now, we can have a look at the leaderboard and uh, see who is leading the way going in to the end of week five. So we've got Luigi in first place on 13 points, followed closely by Stu, Pinko and Shade, who have all got 13 points. So tie at that top place there but all pressure on all these players to kind of keep going and they've all had incredible starts so wouldn't surprise me at all that they're able to keep up with these performances and make sure that they are just keeping on top of the the matches that they've got left in this format. Then you got Johnny down in fifth, Worms Eye in sixth, Will in seventh, Imagi in eighth, Pogamati in ninth, Prim in tenth, Alex in eleventh, Yorine in twelfth, Hectic in thirteenth, Purple in fourteenth. Remember, he's got all of those games to play going into the rest of this circuit. We've got Bebum in fifteenth, and then we've got Xenophist Ace in sixteenth. So things hotting up very nicely as we go into the rest of this season. So we're only in week five as well. We've got ten more weeks of tournaments to go. And the big thing is, guys, I hope you are enjoying the circuit so far. It's been incredible. This week has been great. We saw some more pinko action, but really, I think hats off to Marty 
this week, just taking the match in the game to Stu and being able to get a big win there and get himself off to a really good start going into the rest of this tournament. So massive props to Luigi as well, getting a big win over Will this week. And also Nigel pulling out a nice win against Johnny, who's been on a real hot streak and pulling himself back into it, going into the rest of the tournament. So things really heating up now, and it feels like a really crunch time as we're going into this tournament. So we'll be back next week with week six. Do leave your comments in the comment section below. Let me know what your favorite game was in today and who you're cheering for. But we've had some incredible plays, some incredible matchups, and we're only just beginning to get into this Moon series. So it's super exciting. But I'm going to sign off now, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. I hope you've enjoyed the games today in this episode. If you have, do comment, do leave a like, and do subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you next week for more Flinch Squad Circuit Review episodes. So until then, guys, take care of yourselves and bye bye.